Hi guys, my name is Alex Wayne and I want to tell you guys about how I got into UCLA. A little um, background on me, I'm a civil engineering major at UCLA on the first year and I was just let into the Samueli Engineering School at UCLA. I come from Southern California, mainly Orange County and you know, very competitive high school but we're still you know up there working hard doing our best and i want to just let you guys know how i got in being average at a competitive school so let's just dive into my grades now i don't have like the best grades but i had a 4.38 gpa weighted through four years and i was about like top 20 percent in my class which was like okay pretty good right but not the best. I took nine AP classes, boom, in high school. And as you can see, I did okay on the test. Not that great, not that bad. Some awards I got were that I was a National Merit Commander Scholar, which means I was like, I did well on the PSAT, but I wasn't good enough to get the scholarship. And I was also an NHS member and I was um, AP Scholar with Distinction. Um, those don't really mean much, but you know, it's just something that you can put on your app if you're going to. So now I'm gonna talk about the SAT. I know that UC is trying to like push out the SAT and make like their own test and whatever, but I still wanna give you guys some like tips and like a little info on that. I got 1530 on my test. I took it three times and I got 740 on reading and writing and 790 on math. So how I studied for this was that every single night for like, like three months before the test, I would do either a reading and writing section or a math section. And what I would do is that, for example, let's say on Monday, I was going to take the reading and writing section. Then Tuesday, I was going to correct the reading and writing section. And then I was going to also do a math section on Tuesday night. So I was continuously prepping myself through just practice, 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 because that's really what the SAT is all about, you know? If you keep taking this test, you eventually realize that all the questions are the same and that you'll be able to know how to answer them. Another part of the UC app is that they're going to be talking about extracurriculars or like activities that you do. The point of this is to get to know you as a person and what you do outside of school. They don't want you to be just a academically focused student, but they also want to see what you do for your community and what you do outside. And you know me, wholesome guy, I did so much. Nah, I'm kidding. Let's just dive into it. So what I wrote on this was that I try to fill out all 10 spots, right? And some of them, they sound kind of bad, but you know, overall, I still got the job done. So the first thing I put on mine was that junior year, I was put at ASB student government as spirit commissioner. What I wrote for this one was that I planned weekly rallies, spearheaded initiatives for campus involvement, planned athletic event themes and created chants. And notice how I don't use full sentences, but rather I used action verbs and little phrases just so that I can get the point across of what I'm doing. I also wrote that I was ASB Executive Vice President. I planned and managed school events, directed committees, fundraised for student body, and delegated tasks. Because I'm applying to engineering and you know, like STEM in general is just super competitive. I wanted them to know that I had some type of experience with this and I wasn't just going into this blind, you know, I really like felt that I was capable of getting into this civil engineering stuff. So I made sure to write about my internship, my engineering internship. And I said that I created AutoCAD floor plans, obtained measurements during site visits, revamped structural algorithms and prepared client presentations. I was also a volunteer in the rehab deployment at my local hospital. So I wrote that I was the first volunteer to receive annual round of applause award answer patient calls and assist nurses, interact with patients, and do administrative tasks. I wanted to put that I was the first volunteer to receive the award because I wanted them to see that I was able to accomplish something with this volunteering aspect. I was involved in church, so I put I was a leader of a, sec a group of second grade boys, and I assisted in worship every service. 
and I also put down that I was the school mascot. Ooh, Ooh. Wally the Warrior. Ooh. So I put down I was the school mascot because that's something not a lot of people have, right? If you're competing against the people in your school that like how you see to it. Not everyone at your school is going to write about being a mascot. So if you have this unique experience, you can be able to highlight upon that. So I wrote that I led athletic student sections. I performed routines at athletic games and assisted in rallies. Now it may not sound like a lot, but I purposely put this in so that I could highlight upon it later in my essays. Continuing on with the extracurriculars, I put I was co-director of the construction committee in ASB. I said I designed and built dance entrances and negotiated with local hardware stores. Another thing I did was that I was publicity director for a club. I said that I taught students in China English using Skype and PowerPoints, and I publicized club meetings and fundraisers and fundraised for schools in China. I also put I was on basketball team. I was a sophomore captain, right? And I said that I communicated between coach and players, assisted in walkthroughs, and I awarded the most improved player in 2016. Ooh, okay, okay. So, yes, I can write about, oh, you know, I, I played basketball and stuff, but it's important to show how you affected this whole program in general. And that's what I did, you know. Me, you know, going above and beyond, just trying to be the best basketball player I can, you know. You know, how I made varsity basketball at 5'5. Five, five. Go ahead, check that video out, man. And just to fill out my extracurriculars, I went ahead and said I was a piano student. Everyone has this, but you know, I put it on, you know, just to make my parents proud, you know. So I said I was rewarded certificate of merit level 10. Now, here's a pro tip. I know people that, I'm not saying to do this, but I know people that have drove their grandmas around just because they live together and said they were the president of a grandma transportation club. Hmm. Now I'm not saying you should do this and make up these clubs and stuff, but if you're like my friend who doesn't really have that much under his belt, right? You can go ahead and, you know, make, make stuff up, you know, president of dishwashing club or something like that, you know, if you really need to. I'm not saying to do it. I'm not promoting it, but I'm also not against it. Now, here's the point that I think most people struggle with is the UC personal insight essays. So these essays are designed so that they are able to understand you as a person better and see you as who you are other than just like a resume, right? They don't really get to know you, your personality and stuff like that. So they really want to understand who you are as a person. Yes, you could highlight upon academic success and stuff, but you really want to show who you are outside of that, how you affect your community and stuff. So for my first essay prompt, I was talking about how to describe an example of your leadership experience in which I have positively influenced others. So for this one, I talked about how for rallies, we had bad communication, lack of communication. So I was able to come up with the idea of using radios and walkie talkies so that we could communicate thoroughly while the rally was going on and how it helped fix the rallies and how everyone on campus like felt like oh the rallies were better and like happier my second prompt was that everyone has a creative side and i have to describe how i express my creative side so for this one i wanted to highlight upon you know a unique experience so once again i went back to being the mascot for the school now as the mascot of the school you know it may sound like you're not doing much but then you have to be able to take something that where you don't really like, see anything and you just have to reach for it. You know how like English te teachers are like, oh, the window shone light through it because it symbolizes that there was hope for the kid who lost his mother and stuff. No, it's just, it's just like, it's just because there was just light in the window, man. But that's what I did with the Wally, the, the warrior mascot thing. 
I was like, oh, you know, as mascot, I was able to create myself into a better person, a more extroverted person, have more fun, be able to interact with people without having to really talk as much because I might be talkative, but then this gave me a chance to not talk as much. And I was also able to, you know, influence everyone and get more crowd interaction during basketball games and stuff like that. And yeah, you just have to be able to like twist it the way you need to. That's the realistic advice that people are giving you on these videos. Part three, I said, what would you say is my greatest talent or skill? And for this one, I didn't say that I had a good talent, but rather I talked about how I, I can, I feel that I'm able to create a good conversation with someone and be able to have a, uh, like a connection with someone. And I talked about how the skill allowed me to help people at my volunteer place when I would talk to patients and how I eventually helped one patient from China, you know, motivate herself to get better and rehab faster. And that's why I was awarded that award for Leo, you know, like round of applause. Part four, I said, describe how you have taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity. So once again, going back to, you know, being an engineering student and having to get into that like, engineering school, I wanted to be able to stand out, show people that I had this experience already that not many people had. So I said, oh, I'm, um, I had an engineering internship this summer and I talked about how I was able to see the day-to-day -day basis of an engineering firm. I got to learn some vernacular that I needed and just stuff like that. That's the important thing about doing engineering as such a competitive school, right? How are you going to stand out? You may not be the smartest person on campus, right? You may not be the one who's studying the most either, but you have to be able to stand out in a different way, right? Are you able to influence people around you easily? Are you able to create a sense of community with those you don't know? How are you going to do that, right? Do you have some special experience that no one else has you have to be able to talk about those that's the point you have to be able to highlight upon the things that you know that other people at your school don't so yeah that was me that was how i got into ucla and i know it sounds like oh you're like an average student and yeah i pretty much am i'm not really the most hard working i'm not the laziest i'm not the smartest i'm also not the dumbest i think that you just gotta be able to take something average and turn it into something special. You know, as they say, you can't make an omelet without cracking some eggs. Anyways, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. You guys can also message me on Instagram at wayman underscore Alex. And if you guys need anything, if you guys want me to read my essays, if you guys want me to talk about my common app stuff, you guys can, you know, message me comment down below and maybe i'll do something about that yeah all right guys thank you for watching i'm alex wayne and stay tuned for the how i made varsity at 5 5 video okay all right see you guys